Hey, Jared here from soundguitarlessons.com. This lesson is mainly an ear training lesson, though it's just practical in a lot of other ways as well. Composition, melody writing, writing harmonies, figuring out harmonies to uh, play over or under other melodic lines. But the challenge with this lesson is that we are going to sing along with our guitar and we are going to harmonize in different intervals thirds, sixths, different ways. I just want to introduce this to you. It can be extremely challenging depending on if you are comfortable with singing or how your ears are. It's the kind of thing that for me is very, very challenging. And I've been working a lot on these types of exercises to fill in my weaknesses a little bit. And I want to share with you how it's going for me and suggest a couple ways to practice it for yourself. If you totally don't want to sing ever, then this might not be the lesson for you. But if you're inclined to sing at all, this is extremely powerful to work on, even just for fretboard clarity and theory, but for the ears as well and intonation, really fun stuff. Let's dive into the lesson. The first thing that we want to do is make sure that we just have a scale structure we're really familiar with. So here's where I'm going to do it in the lesson. I'm going to be playing in the C major scale of the second and third position, root, second, third, fourth, fifth of the scale. I have a scale pack with all the scales in it. It's called the Printable Parent Scales PDF. It's all the parent scales, tons of scale diagrams for you to work on. This is in there exactly in C major, exactly where I'm playing it. So if you need to work on your scales at all, you can get that for free with the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales to get it. But in this lesson, you'll have the diagram on the screen anyway. And we're going to make sure we know that first. And now we're going to add harmonization to single notes that we're playing in the scale by singing them, making sure we hear them correctly. So let's dive into the first way to work on this. The first thing to try to do is to sing a third above whatever you're playing on the guitar. We're going to do this in a variety of ways. Now, instead of giving you a specific exercise of notes, you're going to find where the range feels the best to you and where it feels the most possible. And I'm going to suggest to you that you find a comfortable spot and kind of go back and forth between it, between two notes. I've been working on singing a lot and yet doing this is a whole different ball game because I have to actually intonate and it's kind of exactly something that I need to work on. So uh, what I suggest doing before, hopefully you haven't already kind of checked your notes here, I suggest trying to not check your notes on the guitar that you're supposed to sing. Try to do that as little as possible because you want your ear to grapple with, whoa, whoa, where am I? What is it? What is it? Don't just give yourself the note, try to sing it. Give yourself the note, try to sing it. Give yourself the note, try to sing it. Don't do that. Try to even from the very beginning, oh, where is it? Okay, okay. And maybe you're at a place where you need to just work on matching a single pitch. Great, take your, take your steps back, do little baby steps towards things, find where you need to be with something, make it more challenging for yourself. If you're feeling like you're ready for that, make it easier on yourself in whatever way, if that's what you need to do. If we do that, every lesson we ever pay attention to, watch, take in, read, should be valuable to us because we know how to kind of be our own teacher uh, and learn something from it that's valuable to us. So here's where I'm at with it. Uh, so I'm thinking, where's that note? Okay, we're finding a da, there's a two, uh, okay, there's a three. Now more than just finding the three, I have to like get it in tune with it. Two, three. Okay, now I'm gonna try to sing. Da, 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 da. Big, big, huge guitarist bonus on this is that I'm very aware and seeing mentally kind of tracking where I am on the guitar. I know that I'm singing that note. So I am thinking of, even though I can't play these two notes at the same time on the guitar on the same string, I'm actually imagining right here in my mind with the voice and then I'm of course playing this one. So This is where if you find a comfortable spot for your voice at all, even a couple notes, I'm going to go up a little more. Spot that I got to intonate better. I had moments there that were not in tune, but I did not stop and give myself the note and then try to do it. That really wipes clean the neural pathways. Not that I know about <laughs> brain science, but here's my way of explaining it. It wipes clean the effort that your brain is putting into 
uh, trying to actually hear it, right? So you need to like say, whoa, is that it? I don't even know. Then move on to a different note and different note and different note until you find one that you're like, oh, that, that feels right. I know that's right. Now then move back up to it and don't just give yourself that note because then you're learning to rely on being able to get that note and then match what you remember hearing on the guitar. Huge, huge aspect of this is to not just give yourself a note all the time. So you have to... Mm, got it to actually feeling good and I did not give myself the note. And even if you're like, I have no idea if I'm the wrong, I'm on the wrong, <laughs> the right note or the wrong note, then try as long as you can to find it by ear and only last resort you give it to yourself. And, you know, if you really want to check to say, how in tune was I? Check. You know, I did it. I played back what I played and then do that as a little reward for yourself to be like, oh, cool. That's where I was. But then go back to the, the challenge of really finding it and then find a spot that's comfortable for your voice. I've worked, been working on falsetto. So I was up there in that high range and I'm typically a bass range, like baritone range. Ba, ba, da. Takes me a second to get back into it every time. Now, if you grew up singing in choirs, this might be like super easy for you. I did not. I've been just, I started playing guitar when I was 10 and I played no instruments before that. I didn't sing, I didn't play piano. I didn't do anything else until way later. So I was playing guitar for 10 years before I ever even was aware of the concept of intonation and ear training or anything like that, which we just don't have on the guitar because we have frets. So I was very aware of, oh, this fret, this fret, this note, this note, some theory, stuff like that, but not at all in tune with the type of listening that this requires. So I'm really into now in my life, at least working on these kinds of exercises. They're filling in things for myself. So that's a major third. We have a couple more to do, three more to do. Let's dive into the next one. The next step is to sing a third below. So same deal. This is going to be pretty straightforward now because all the all the tips I gave apply to all of these. And I just want to walk you through also do it a third below to feel that. So now you're singing the lower note. Okay. So I'll play this. Okay. I'm on that note. And I'm singing, I'm thinking, I'm singing this right here. I'm not feeling good about it right now. It's getting better. So I'm a little more comfortable with that falsetto range. I feel like I'm using a lot of breath when I'm down this other range. That's singer stuff that I'm grappling with and struggling with. So that can be really hard. And when I first started singing at all with any exercises like this, it was like I had no, no uh, fitness at all with my voice, no breath control or anything. So that's part of the challenge. So we wanna be singing also a third below. Now, here's the next step. The inversion of a third is a sixth. Okay, so if you play a third, one, two, three, one, three, one, three, one, three, and then you move this note up an octave, boom, one, two, three, da, 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 da. that's one, one. Okay, this is a third from here, but this is a sixth from here. So the inversion of the interval of a third is a sixth. Okay, so one, two, three, okay, from those two notes is three steps. From here, one, two, three, four, five, six. From that note to that note was six steps, but the same two pitches. So the inversion means you took the note on the bottom, moved it to the top note or other way around. So if you move this to the top now up an octave, you get a third again. So therefore, let's also sing sixths. So sing a, sing a note, and then we're playing a sixth above it. So you can get into it however you want. And I recommend doing what I'm doing here, back and forth between two or three notes. Da, 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 da. Remember, I'm thinking on the fretboard when I'm singing too. You don't have to do that. You can follow your ears. But as soon as I start following my ears and not knowing what I'm playing, I get a little nervous. <laughs> I want to know what I'm doing in the scale. So a sixth below, let's move on to the last way to do it. Of course, the last way to do it is to sing a sixth above. You can do this in any order, but all this is really great. So I'm going to play this 
and then sing a sixth above it, which is the root of the scale. Uh, so how am I going to find that? Da, 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 there it is. Ba, da, 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 Hard to tune that one. But you see me just playing around with it. You can get find where you need to anywhere on the guitar, any scale, and just be able to get into that, even the tiniest bit. Maybe this is your first time doing that, and you are trying to just keep it in one spot and sing it in a roll. Great, that's amazing practice. The most amazing practice is the thing that is just the perfect amount of challenge for us, right? So you got to find where that is. Do the version that's challenging for you if that's less, or maybe you're flying through much more better than I am and you're doing some scale patterns with it or you're just doing it faster or you're trying some more difficult keys than the major scale. So uh, cool stuff uh, and I am practicing that for myself and so I wanted to share it with you. If you don't know your scale forms on the guitar like that scale form or any others, I have a scale pack that has seven different scales that are called the parent scales, which a bunch of other scales come from as well. All the scale shapes and forms on the guitar, different positions of how to play them, all the diagrams for you. That's totally for free. It's called my printable, printable parent scales PDF. I like to name things, but it is, it's uh, just a big PDF of a bunch of uh, scale diagrams. So you can get that for free with the link in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash scales. I post a new lesson video every week. Hope to see you in the next lesson. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.